Hi there, I'm Anmol and I welcome you back to my YouTube channel. So this video would be in continuation to the latest video released on my channel, which was an automation hub. So we'll deep dive a little more into automation hub to see how it can bring more benefit and value to your organization. So a quick recap, we did see that we have to go to tenant settings to actually enable automation hub and automation store. You can check the previous video for the steps of doing the same. Now, since we already have automation hub and automation store on our tenant, we can just simply click on it to access both automation hub and automation store. So here's our automation hub. Now, we do have an option to actually link any of our UiPath projects with automation hub directly, but we can only link those projects that are in development phase with development not started. So suppose if I select here a blank process and I want to link it to an idea or a card in Automation Hub, I can simply do that via settings. You can see over here, I can put an Automation Hub URL. Later, if I want to change it, so I can simply come and change the URL and it would get linked to another idea. Now coming back to Automation Hub. Now suppose this is phase live, this is status production. Similarly, if your phase is development and your status is not started, like you're just starting off with development of this particular idea, then that's the time when you can actually link it to your studio. Now, the other thing that I would like to highlight is that there are different roles. So if you go to admin section, okay, now if I go to admin section and I go to roles, so there are different roles, okay, account owner, system admin, RPA sponsors and like that. Now there is also this program manager. So once you select program manager, you can see what all rights does a program manager has. Okay. Similarly, there is also one other role, which is citizen developer power user, which means you'll get an option here only in the automation hub, whether you want to open this to a linked UI path project or not. You can see here, start development of projects assigned to CD power user, which is access the automation pipeline to select an idea or an automation from the citizen developer power user pipeline and start implementing it. And this gives you access to add or file, add files or components. So from here, you can create your own rules also like you do not want to go with these sets of roles and rights, rather you want to create user specific or your organization specific roles and rights. You can create a new role here and assign all the power that you want to give to this particular role. So that depends on how your organization hierarchy works. The other thing, now if you come to workspace and automation pipeline, so from here, you're going to pick up one, one automation and see which automation you want to start working on first. And you can decide that by going through automation potential and primary reason to automate. Now, if your cost is the priority, you can pick up something that's going to give you cost benefits. Okay. Now, suppose if this is sample idea and I want to make some changes in it, or I want to reject this idea, mark that as duplicate or whatever that I want to do is. So I can simply open this. Now this will give a detailed view of this particular idea. Now over here, if you see, if I click on edit. Now for me clicking on edit, I should have those rights that I can actually go and edit any idea. If I do not have those rights, I cannot do it. Okay, so over here, you can put in all these answers. And now this is a detailed assessment that I also talked about in the last video, which an SME can do. Okay. In which we answer all these questions. What is the primary reason to automate? Whether it's cost, quality, or productivity. How frequent are the changes expected in the environment? Now, employee profile. This actually shows how much time is this automation going to save. Whether there are 10 people doing the same thing, whether there are two people doing the same thing. So you'll have to tell that. Then process volumetry, which is what is the frequency? How much data do we have to process? Whether it's in millions and billions, or it's just few. 
and whether we have to do it monthly, weekly, bi-weekly, quarterly, how we have to do it, what is the peak time, what is the processing time and all these things we answer here. Okay. So an SME or a person who is well aware of the idea or about the process can fill in all these information. Now we can also mark the applications that are being used in here. Now if you see, if you want to select any application, you will see very few applications being listed here. So there is a setting in Automation Hub in which you can list all possible applications. So now when you come here, you will not see just these few applications, rather you will see hundreds of applications that you've been using or even more than that. Okay, so suppose if your process is using Workday or if your process is using Zoom or Outlook and it's not present here in the Outlook list, you can go to the settings and add the list here. Okay, so for that you can go to, I think, Explore. I'll, I'll show you where that option comes up. Okay, let me go to Admin first of all. Okay, Explore, let me go to Explore. Okay, platform setup, yes. And you can go to app inventory. Okay, and over here you can see application names are already given here. Adobe, PDF, Studio, SAP. So now Workday, Visual Studio. Now if you want to add more in the application inventory so that you see multiple applications being listed there and you also see your application being used. Suppose you came up with a process that uses Zoom. So in the application inventory, you can simply edit and provide another application name. Okay, so you can click on this plus icon and you can mention your application. Okay, so that's how you can make your application inventory more rich. Now, coming back to where we were, so we were in automation pipeline where we saw how we can provide detailed assessment that's going to show that which particular process we should be developing first. Okay. Now, if I come here to Automation Hub. Now, the other thing is how we can make or how we can utilize Automation Store. Okay. Now, Automation Store can also be accessed via Assistant as well. So, for that, what you have to do. So, if we look at the Automation Store over here. Okay. So, let me just open Automation Store. So, we have Automation Store here. So we see UiPath Package Deployment Assistant and we see Process 1. If we want to add any other over here, which means in Automation Store, so that there could be some people who need not to have access to Automation Hub. Rather, they can simply open their assistant and run automation from there itself. So what you can do for that is, if you go to your automation pipeline and you go to your live components, which are almost ready and you want it to be present onto the automation store. Suppose onboarding of new employees, what I want to be present in automation store so that any HR can run it whenever they want. Okay, so I'm gonna open this thing. Now, once I open this thing, I also need to click on publish. Okay, that now I want to publish it. But before publishing, I need to make sure that that particular component is available or that particular NuGet package that has to be run is available. Now you can see for me, it is available. You also get an option to delete, archive, submit change request or convert it to a change request. And if you edit, you get an option to edit the detailed assessment or details related to this particular process. Okay, so you can see everything is filled up. You can just go through it once. Now, if you come to components, uh, you'll see all the components that are available. Now, if you want to add any other component, you can search it from here. Okay. Once you have done all of this, what you are going to do, you're going to click on publish. Okay. So I'll need to fill in all these results over here. I can also skip it. So I'm going to skip it. Now I have to select the package that I want to be used for consumption. Now, suppose this is the NuGet package that I want to upload. So I'm going to add file and it would upload it. Now, this particular NuGet package would also be available on my assistant for my consumption. So once I click on publish, it would save my changes and publish it. And you can see here it says publish allows users in automation store to access the automation and use it in UiPath assistant. 
So when once I click on see it in store, I'll be able to see the same thing that I published on automation store as well. So you can see it here, right? And if I click on get, it would be available on my UiPath assistant as well. And you can simply go and consume this thing from your UiPath assistant. So if there are 100 users and you do not want everybody to get access to Automation Hub, or maybe they do not have an idea on how to use it, they can directly access it from Assistant. So that's how well Automation Hub and Automation Store are linked. And you can see it shows published. Okay, you can go and change the published settings if you want, like you want to update the package, you can do it. You want to unpublish it, you can do it. And that's how this automation hub with automation store is going to bring great value to your organization. So that's it for this particular video. Thank you for watching the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get instant update. And I shall see you in the next video soon. Till then, happy automation.